Hello guys, in this video we'll discuss coroutine in Rust. If you have been working with programming languages that natively support coroutines like Kotlin, Go, you should be aware about the power of coroutines. If you haven't, worry not, we'll discuss from zero and build all the way up on our possible options of coroutines with Rust. First of all, let's discuss what is a coroutine and why do we even need it? So coroutine is a function that can pause its execution and resume later, allowing for cooperative multitasking. As we can see in this diagram, we have a caller that calls a coroutine, which is a suspend function. And the initial call does some processing, yields some value and then resumes. So then later when the caller wants to resume, can resume. The caller wants to destroy, can destroy. The caller wants to pause, can pause. And anytime the coroutine can yield a value. So we will just get a value, uh, which can be some result, uh, let's say one. So this is how a coroutine work. Caller can call, can resume, can pause, and basically uh, still get the value after certain execution. So to achieve concurrency efficiently, we need coroutines. Now, as of today, October 2025, Rust table doesn't support coroutine yet, but it's available in a nightly version. So as you can see, it says, it's part of the Rust unstable book and as it says coroutines are resumable function which is just what we discussed and this is how the syntax looks like so as you can see there is a value which is yield and then there's some processing and uh, you can basically resume and you know complete so as of today the coroutines in Rust are still not stable so this part or this syntax will not cover today will cover when it's stable and ready to be used in the stable version for today we'll explore different other options uh, you know which allows us to build or work with coroutines in rust so for the purpose of this video we'll be using gen awaiter crate and you can read more about this crate i'll drop the link in the description so as it says this crate implements generators for rust generators are feature common across many programming languages they let you yield a sequence of values from a function so one might think hey generators but we were discussing about coroutines right exactly so as you can see right here the crate implements stackless generator aka coroutines in stable rust instead of using yield so basically you can read more about uh, why this crate and uh, when the stable uh, like things would be stable in the rust and how it would help us with coroutines which we'll see in a minute so enough of the theory and now we understand what is a coroutine, what is a generators. So let's try to satisfy at least some of our coroutines use cases with uh, generator crate and see where uh, are we getting limited or what's the scope that we can you know cover. So just move to your cargo travel file and right here you can add this generator crate. And currently the latest version is this one, but depending on when you're watching this video, just make sure to grab the latest version. Right here, we have our first example for the day and we are using gen awaiter and we are using gen to, you know, then yield the values and uh, this will basically convert this code to a more of a coroutine or generator style and then we just keep on yielding the values. So if we run this, there you go, it just yields three values. And to understand if it's not yielding in one go or returning the values in one go, but instead it's basically, you know, yielding and doing some operation which we simulate here by pausing. So if we run this, as you can see, one by one, we'll get one. And then again, there is a pause and two. Again, there is a pause and three. So we don't just immediately see all, the, all of them return at once. So as you can see, we can pause and we can yield the values later as well. Now let's take another example where we manually control the states. So right here we have a gen again and for one, two, three, we just starting the task, sleep for some time, finished and yield. And then we just manually control the execution here. As you can see in a loop, we just do the resume. So right here we have different operations that we want to do. As you can see, we have resume, async resume. So we resume. And just like the initial uh, unstable coroutine in Rust, we, we saw the same, we have yield and complete. So right here, as you can see, uh, whenever the value is yield, we just print here, 
and then at the end when the state is completed finally we just break out and basically all tasks are done so let's try to run this and understand so right here starting task one finished and then this here as you can see we are printing right here received and the whatever we receive which is the formatted value so after all three cycles we are at the end saying all tasks are done because then we get the status complete we break out of our infinite loop and then we just print all tasks are done so yes we can manually control the states as well as you can see right here and then we have another example where we make it more like kotlin suspend style functions so again we are just yielding some values and right here we make it async and instead of just resume we do async resume and if we try to run this one as well right here as you can see we yield a value we pause for two, two seconds then we yield basically some processing the sleep here is basically simulating some processing but again on your end you can add some processing as well to better understand uh, how uh, this basically works but it's super useful trust me and you can use it with the stable version as well as you can see right here in this example now after you know how it works one might think hey for example kotlin as a language supports coroutine how is it different from you know rust generator style coroutine so kotlin coroutines are fully async tasks that can suspend resume and communicate bidirectionally across threads while rust generators only support stack level suspension and one way yielding which we just discussed in the start so you know they can't natively await return to other threads or handle structured concurrency because you know it's not supported on the language level yet and what we are doing is just using the generators so just try it out experiment on your end let me know in the comments what do you guys think and uh, where it is useful for your features uh, read more about it i'll drop the link in the description uh, yeah i'll catch you guys in another video with another interesting topic until then bye bye